In the first part of this tutorial, we looked at the definitions of pointwise and uniform convergence, and we also saw a simple example of how these definitions can be used directly to check whether or not a functional sequence actually has these properties. In this second part, we'll look at some alternative ways of checking for pointwise and uniform convergence. Now in analysis, it's important to bear in mind that theorems are there to help us rather than confuse us. So that's why I've called this theorem Helpful Theorem 1. And what this theorem says is that if we have a sequence of bounded functions fn of x defined on some interval, and if f is also a bounded function, then our functional sequence is uniformly convergent if and only if the Chebyshev norm of fn minus f tends to zero as n tends to infinity. So here the Chebyshev norm is defined as the supremum over all values of x in the function's domain of the modulus of fn of x minus f of x, and we'll see how this works with an example. Suppose we have a new functional sequence, and in this example, as in all examples, it's important to pay attention to the domain on which the functions are defined. So the domain in this example is the set of real numbers from 1 to infinity, including 1, and the functions in the sequence are given by fn of x equals nx over 1 plus nx for all x values in the domain and natural numbers n. And we want to decide whether or not this sequence is pointwise convergent and whether or not it's uniformly convergent. And here's a diagram of the first few functions in our sequence. The first function in our sequence, f1 of x, is this green line down here. f2 of x is this yellow line here. And you can see that the general trend is that the functions appear to be monotonically increasing, and they appear to be bounded above by the constant function f of x equals 1. And what we'll see in this example is that in fact f of x equals 1 is the limit function for this sequence. So how are we going to examine the convergence of this sequence? Well, first of all, consider a fixed value of x, because we want to check for pointwise convergence first. If x is a fixed number between 1 and infinity, it's straightforward to show that fn of x will tend to 1 as n tends to infinity. So we say that our sequence is pointwise convergent to the constant function f of x equals 1. Now let's check for uniform convergence. I haven't included the details here, but you can check that each function fn of x is bounded between 0 and 1. And indeed, the diagram that we saw earlier suggested that that had to be true. And so, since we're dealing with the sequence of bounded functions, that means we can apply the helpful theorem that we saw a few moments ago. So in order to apply the theorem, we have to find the Chebyshev norm of fn minus f and show that it tends to zero. First of all, remember that we have f of x equals one because we want to check whether the sequence converges uniformly to the constant function one. And if you work out what the modulus of fn of x minus 1 is, it simplifies to this expression, 1 over 1 plus nx. Now obviously this expression becomes smaller as x becomes larger. So in order to maximise this expression, we need to consider the smallest possible value of x, which in our case is 1, because our domain goes from 1 to infinity. So the Chebyshev norm of fn minus f in this example is given by 1 over 1 plus n, which obviously tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. And therefore, the sequence is uniformly convergent to the function f of x equals 1. Now let's consider the same example again, but suppose we modify the domain that we're looking at, so this time the functions are defined on the interval going from 0 to infinity, including 0. And we're going to see how this changes things in our example. This time x equals 0 is actually a special case because fn of 0 is equal to 0 for all values of n, and that also means that the limit as n tends to infinity will be 0. But for non-zero values of x, the functions in the sequence still converge to 1 rather than 0. So this means we now have a pointwise limit function which is given by 0 if x equals 0 and 1 if x is greater than 0. So the sequence is still pointwise convergent, but the limit function is not the same as it was before. 
Now, if we consider uniform convergence, bear in mind that our limit function is defined differently for x equals 0 and x not equal to 0. So when we work out an expression for the modulus of fn of x minus f of x, we have two different expressions depending on whether or not x equals 0. Now, this time, when we're calculating the Chebyshev norm of fn minus f, we find that it's equal to 1, whereas before it was equal to 1 over 1 plus n. So in this case, the supremum is just a non-zero constant. It has no dependence on n, so it doesn't converge to zero as n tends to infinity. In case you're confused, the reason the Chebyshev norm is 1 is because, if you consider a very small positive value of x, you can see that the expression 1 over 1 plus nx can be made arbitrarily close to 1, so the supremum of the modulus of fn of x minus f of x in our domain must be 1. And since 1 doesn't converge to 0, that means in this case, having changed the domain on which the functions are defined, our functional sequence is actually not uniformly convergent. So in the previous example, we saw that the functional sequence was no longer uniformly convergent after we changed the domain so that the pointwise limit function was no longer a continuous function. And the next theorem we're going to see will shed a bit more light on this. Now let's look at another important theorem for functional sequences. The reason why it's so important is because it's so helpful. And this theorem says that if we have a uniformly convergent sequence of functions, and each function in our sequence is continuous, then that means the limit function of the sequence must also be continuous. So why is this theorem helpful? Well, one reason is that if we find that a sequence of functions is pointwise convergent, but the pointwise limit function f of x is not continuous, then that means we automatically know that the sequence can't be uniformly convergent, because if it was, it would have to have the same limit function f of x, and f of x would have to be continuous. So this theorem can substantially reduce the amount of work we have to do when we're checking for uniform convergence. So let's look at one more example. In this example, the domain of our sequence of functions is the open interval from 0 to pi, and fn of x is given by sine to the n of x for all natural numbers n. So just to clarify, sine to the n of x is the same as sine x in brackets to the power n. And again, we want to examine whether the sequence is pointwise convergent and whether it's uniformly convergent. And here's a diagram of our functional sequence. In this case, each function is a curve between 0 and 1, and these curves actually rise and descend more and more sharply as the sequence goes on. So, for example, this is f1 of x, this is f2 of x, and so on. And because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, each function in our sequence attains a maximum value of 1 when x is equal to pi over 2. So for every value of x between 0 and pi, except pi over 2, we can say that sine x takes a value strictly between 0 and 1, and therefore sine to the n of x will tend to this discontinuous function. The reason being that in general, if we have any number strictly between 0 and 1, raised to the power n, then this will tend to zero as n tends to infinity. And therefore our functional sequence is pointwise convergent to this discontinuous function. Now if we consider uniform convergence, the pointwise limit f of x is not continuous since it has a point of discontinuity at x equals pi over 2. And therefore, using the theorem that we saw earlier, we can say that since each function in our sequence is continuous, then there's no way the sequence can converge to a discontinuous limit function. In other words, the sequence is not uniformly convergent. So let's just summarise what we've talked about in this tutorial. Given a functional sequence, we check for pointwise convergence by thinking of x as being fixed and considering what happens as n tends to infinity. And if the sequence is pointwise convergent to a function f of x, it must either be uniformly convergent to the same function f of x, or not uniformly convergent at all. Pointwise convergence is the easier type of convergence to check for. When testing for uniform convergence, we can try to use the definition directly, in other words the epsilon and n definition, but in many cases this might be difficult, 
So if at all possible, we should try to use a theorem in order to make our lives easier, and we've seen two examples of useful theorems in this tutorial. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and look out for the next one coming soon.